started. Uh, Matt Senna is in the house. Yeah, <laughs> Matt. All right, we got we got Allie and Corey. Is that your name? Cole. Oh. Allie, Cole. What, what's your buddy's name? Aaliyah. His name's Cole. 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 With a K. Oh, with a K. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and brother Matt is is in the house. He's our uh, he's our everything out there in New York. Yeah. Our go to no, our go to no. brother of the water. So I wanted to remind you yeah. the reason um, the reason you're here is because you got called. Everybody knows what that means. There were there was a knocking at your bladder. Or there was a knocking on your inner knowingness and said, "Hey, listen, there's something to this. There's a reason that someone told me about it. I'm gonna dig a little deeper and I'm gonna go into it and I'm gonna find out." And a lot of people got started that way. They were in, yeah. either in a desperate situation. Or they saw how healthy other people were who were on this uh, practice. And they said, I want to do this. I want to get out of this. So they started. Well, there is a deep memory in each. Every, I'm not like talking like an Italian. There's a deep memory in all of us about being in the water world, in the amniotic fluid, and you're in a bubble with your mom for those nine months. That memory is is built in you it's embedded with you it's the same reason that you know how to heal yourself but we have somehow been um convinced that there are better healers than us and so getting into urine therapy reminds you that you have this power and you can use it and you can restore your health you can come back to calmness and 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 balance again this is melissa the raw organic girl she's my new graphics uh, designer Hi, Melissa. Hi, Welcome Melissa. to the call. Has she got her speaker on? <clears throat> Hi, Melissa. We can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, yes. I'll put the camera soon. I'm just feeding my, my dog really quick. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, so today, we're going to do this a little bit different. Now, all the other calls have been given the title World Urine Therapy conference calls. Today, we're going to bring it into the octave of plasma. Thank you, Matt. We're going to go, we're going to go all into the fourth state of matter. You know, the three states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. And what excites me about plasma, uh, not only is that something that we're drinking, uh, plasma is what the first responders give to victims uh, that are in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, right? They give them plasma, but ours is filtered a whole lot of times thanks to our uh, sophisticated system known as the nephron system. So we're drinking plasma. Plasma also has the fourth dimensional or fifth dimensional state is what a lot of people are moving toward. You'll see a lot of discussions in some of these metaphysical groups about plasma. And that's why we're calling it the World Golden Blood Plasma Water Convention today. So uh, let me go over, let me go over a few things. And then we're going to just go non how, Do you guys have time to spend? How much kind of time do you have today? Oh, yeah. As much as, as, much as time. Yeah. I get a client at 3 o'clock, but, I, you know, I'm not going to go that long. <laughs> I, have a, I have a client in uh, about an hour and a half. Okay. So we'll get in at least an hour. Now, you, you new guys here on the line. All right. Cole and Aliyah, you're going to get some questions thrown at you. So you're going to be ready, whether you're ready or not. Okay. <laughs> Did everybody bring refreshments? I'll be right back. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Go do what you do. I'll just bring some back. <laughs> hey, Matt, show Cole your, uh, your bottle. Yeah, yeah, I love this thing. It makes it uh, the, the on, on the go possible uh, hideaway uh, brand, and it collapses. Oh, it collapses. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so I got it in my pocket, That's like up. in the city. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah perfect. All the yesterday, uh, she had to get a new purse, and uh, she has a big purse now. And she's so excited because she carries a 32 ounce jar in there now. <laughs> so easy to carry it around. So, but that's a, that's genius. I love it. Well, if you can make it fashionable like that, you know like proudly wear it. I, I do yeah. that. I, I would do that. It's just not my uh, circumstance. <laughs> You're not in those situations at the moment. 
No, I'm just trying to survive yeah, right. the subway. <laughs> so uh, yeah. let me go over, let me go over a couple of rules of etiquette for our, our call today and say a few things. And then we're going to go into our communion. That's why everybody bring some water, because we like to honor uh, our source water, our holy water. You know, that would be a whole new church to go to. We go to the church and you walk in and they got a jar of pee right there at the front door instead of their holy water. They... <laughs> but I don't know who's going to provide it. Not, we don't want the, pro the popes or the preachers. Um, who just entered? Cole, did you get some or are you, you borrowing Kalia's? Uh, I, I, I'm going to wait till she gets here. I'm not going to test hers out today, but I just went right before I went, but uh, right before we started. Okay, so we're not going to push it up. You. We're not going to push you, but it's a universal water, so it wouldn't matter. Laura just joined the call. Melissa just joined the call. So here's the etiquette. In case you guys remember some of this uh, etiquette rules, raise your hand if you want to speak. Is there an is there a raise hand button available to you guys? Okay, do that do that shtick, and then uh, when we get a chance, we'll give everybody three to five minutes to talk about whatever. Receptor. Hi, Laura. Glad you made it. Darlene raised her hand. Good demo. I don't know how to um, raise the hand. I don't know how to do that. Oh, where is it located? Darlene? In the reaction section on the bottom. On the bottom. I presently have oh, a yes okay. there, but I can't get oh, it to okay. go off. Okay, <laughs> cool. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so here's, here's the etiquette. Raise your hand if you're going to talk. Number two, we had to learn this when our buddy Rico Mesa from the Netherlands was on our call. He could not sit still no matter what. I mean, he's a yogi, and he goes outside, and he exercises, and throws his body up in the air, and he's amazing. Uh, I had to tell people, no yoga, no dancing, no static dancing while you're on the call. Thank you very much. Okay, no eating, no background noise. If you have to eat, turn off your uh, your camera and and audio uh and when you're speaking see if you can slow down your speech because we want to hear every word it's valuable so take your time when you talk now the call is being recorded and some people have jumped on these calls who somehow were off topic so i'm guessing that everybody here knows we're going to talk about urine therapy right good <laughs> There be no confusion. Someone going, you guys are drinking your pee. I think I'm in a cult. How did I get here? We're not that. Group. We're not that group. You don't have to worry about. That. So, what what I want you to look at on this screen here is these are all beautiful souls that have been called to this water, and you guys are now. Um, important to uh, helping humanity learn how to heal themselves and to transform their lives. So there's more, there's more work for you to be done other than, you know, just to learn about this modality, because one of the things I've been teaching and our organization been teaching is how to teach uh, multi-generations, how to teach new people, how to teach uh, the next generation and so on. Does that make any sense? Everything we're doing with this urine therapy community is history in the making. So uh, you may hear things today on this call. You may learn something new on this call. I always learn something new on a call. And so uh, don't, don't hold back. You got something to, sh to share, uh, please do. Who just joined us? Oh, oh, I'm supposed to do something. Uh, Marilyn Watts. Come on in. Can you guys see this? Is this backwards? No, it's it's correct. Good, because we're going to do three connected breaths here when everybody's ready. Now, Jess is not here. Jess Hines. Hi, bud. All right, Laura, what I want you to do is sit comfortable, either in your chair, on the floor, wherever you can. And just start doing a pattern of breathing. Just do three or four deep connected breaths. So you guys can arrive here. iPhone 13 has just joined us. <laughs> How's that for an alias? 
Thank you. Just keep breathing for at least a little bit. That's one of the things you kind of intuitively start doing when you're doing urine therapy because when your mind slows down and your body starts to come back into balance, you want to be able to continue doing that throughout the day, particularly if you feel uh, Susan Merrill is in the house, particularly if you've participated in the world and you can feel the emotional overload and the energy and the information overload. Uh, hi, Susan. Welcome to the call. So take a couple more deep breaths. Get in the habit, if you guys can think about it, to do 30 connected breaths today before your day's over. Every day, do at least 30 connected breaths and see if you can uh, be able to achieve a level of mind or a, a state of peace that carries you throughout the day. How's everybody feeling? Really good. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Grab your water. We're going to do a little bit of a prayer. Prayer slash communion. Where's my book? Where's my book? Hi, Melissa. Hello. We're going to read. Thinking, from, uh, we're going to oh, read. Oh, please, 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 please. This book, I found it in the basement. I don't know who wrote this thing. Okay. <laughs> All right, listen to this. Imagine a perfect whole food from one's inner ocean. Imagine a superfood that is beyond any known complete nutrition or description. Imagine that this divine presence or energy is living in you and available to you right now. I gotta let someone else on. Uh, the door's open, come on in. Right forever. Imagine that this divine presence, the same one that brought your soul here and created your soul suit known as the body, loves you unconditionally by always being with you. This divine presence offers its energy as your golden living water to restore and regenerate health and happiness. Take as much as you wish to drink and repeat drinking as this water of life strengthens after each refiltering stage. Rub, dab, massage, any, and apply as much as you can of fresh or evolving orin to every inch, surface, and opening of the body. As an extra bonus, every time you take another drink of pee during the same day, particularly while looping or sip looping, it contains trillions more stem cells and antibodies to your life, to your health, to your joy, to your transformation, to your liberation. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, uh, Sophina White is in the house. <clears throat> Anybody have a little pepper after kick? <clears throat> Love it. So welcome to the call. Let's start off, and I got questions for everybody today. I'd like to give everybody three minutes to introduce yourself. Tell us where you're located. Uh, what are your daily urine therapy practices and anything you want to share in three minutes? <laughs> Let's start with Darlene. Hi, Jess. Thanks, Brother Sage. Hi, I'm Darlene. I'm a naturopath in Eastern Canada. And um, I love, uh, lately I've been studying um, injecting it um, rectally into the portal vein to the liver. Um, but me, personally, you know, I do it that way. I drink it, I put it on my face. You know, the pores of my face have never been tighter. Um, you know, when I you know, when I do bathe, I, you know, make sure I take a lot and pour it on my head first, you know, and let it soak in as long as I have time to, and then, you know what I mean? Wash as needed. And, you know, I believe it's its own crystal energy. So not only are you physically healing the body, you're energetically aligning with yourself and your own energies. Thank you. Uh, let's go over, let's do jump around the screen. This is better than double jeopardy. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go over to uh, Kelly. Are you ready? She's not ready. Hi, Kelly. Can you see me? Yeah, Hi. We, can, we can see you. Tell, tell everybody who you are, where you're located, and something you want to share about your urine therapy journey. Um, my name's Kelly Williams. I live in Mississippi, and I just started about four or five months ago. And I'm pretty much using it for everything now. So I feel better. Um, 
one reason I started, I had keratoconus in my right eye. So I'm on a journey to heal my eyes. Um, <clears throat> I have put it in my eyes, but I did have surgery. So I kind of held off for a little bit, but um, I'm starting that again. And um, I've used it to clean my eyelids as well, which is really important after having the type of surgery that I had. Um, yeah, I use it in my hair, my face, everything. Don't wear makeup anymore. Don't get my hair done anymore. <laughs> Pretty much like left the whole previous way of thinking behind. Excellent. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to ask you some questions and everybody else in just a little bit. Uh, let's go over to uh, Cole and Aaliyah. Uh, tell people who you are, where you're from, and anything about your journey. you got about three minutes, so go. Hi, I'm Alia. I'm from San Diego County. We live up in the mountains off grid, um, and I'm an herbalist. And Cole and I have five children, and they are also practicing a little shibambu. <laughs> Uh, my son, he had a sore throat the other day, and he's he's eight years old, and he's all about it now. It healed it right up. So we're just uh, really happy to join the community, and we use it for everything. I've been looping lately, but I also use it for enemas and on my skin. So yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I, uh, like I said earlier, we found out on, from Master of Earth on YouTube and uh, it was a long video and he finally gets to the point at like towards the end, he's like hiding behind the, cause he's outside, he's like hiding behind a, a wall and he's like, you gotta drink your water basically. <laughs> and that's it. So I went outside and I, I uh, pump, got pumped up and then I chugged a glass and I was all, oh, that's the beginning of a new life. <laughs> Everything's better now. <laughs> That's about it. Excellent. Thank you, Cole. Thank you. Uh, for anybody who picked up on that, uh, Cole's trying to locate Master of Earth. If anybody knows how to locate him, uh, I'll be glad to interview him. And let's see if we can bring him back into the uh, modern world with his family. Uh, let's jump over to Matt Senna. Hey, I'm in New York City. i um, been practicing for about a year and a half. And I figured out uh, one order of operations in my journey. Um, especially with a lot of different diets, what I liked about the diets was lower inflammation for the most part. Um, and when I started doing UT, that's the first thing I noticed was lower inflammation. Then I noticed, noticed a uh, lower brain, brain fog, and then I noticed uh, more physical relaxation in that order. And I, I posted about that and other people are like, yeah, I get that, that order of things. So I wanted to share that this week. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Um, organic, uh, raw organic girl. Tell us who you are and where you're from and a little about your journey. Yes. Hi, I'm Melissa. So nice to be here. Um, a little bit of where I'm about. Um, I'm about, I'm, uh, uh, I'm located in San Diego and, uh, I have been practicing for the last seven to eight months. I also practice a raw vegan diet. Um, the two together, UT and raw veganism, has really changed my life. Um, UT helped me to improve my cycle and really heal myself because I had a lot of uh, cycle issues, a lot of back pain, cramps, and it just worked wonders for me. I have tried as far uh, everything, looping, um, boiling uh, urine and applying it as massages. I have found that work really amazing. It gives you this very nurtured feeling and um, relaxation like you already ate just a, a really long list of feelings it's amazing I've tried um putting in my eyes ears snorting drinking the only thing I haven't tried is animus so far but that's my my journey with with urine therapy thank you Melissa thank you. uh Laura are you here Laura, introduce yes. yourself, tell us where you're yeah, located so and anything about distracted. your journey. Yeah, I'm English currently in Cyprus and I discovered urine therapy about a year and a half ago as part of my um, holistic health coaching course. We could choose to 
research something in terms of body, mind and spirit. So my body paper was on urine therapy and now my thesis is on urine therapy and how we go beyond the conditioning of what we have been led to believe. Um, and obviously UT really applies to that. And yeah, I think for me, when I first heard about it, I felt that it was already a really familiar practice. Um, I think I've definitely had a few years in India, a few past lives in India. So it was, um, yeah, I started last March after a fast. And I think it was just really freeing because I was living from, I went from the city to then living off grid. Um, so I'd finished a fast and I was like, when everything went a bit crazy in the world, it was so reassuring to know that I don't actually need anything. It was just, I have everything I need. And I think that really rooted the seed of why I'm so passionate in, um, in sharing this. Um, I had, so for my thesis, I am interviewing people who have had a few years of practice. And I spoke to someone this morning about age urine and enemas. So I'm yet to try that. Um, I'm really excited to do so. Um, yeah, and I think my key, the example that I share with people who are a little bit resistant to it, and I don't mind sharing this here, Take is that I had a- One more minute. One more minute. Okay, super fast. Uh, it's really interesting for me because normally I shy away and I keep it really short and sweet, but in this space, I really feel like I want to. Um, I had a really itchy left nipple that would drive me crazy. And obviously you can't itch your nipple in public. So I fasted, the itchiness went away. I went back to eating organic fruit. The itchiness came back within like two days, started drinking the urine and it disappeared. And I had dermatitis on my hand, peeing in nature on my hands after years of it disappeared. Um, so these are kind of slight ailments and yeah, really passionate about where this can go. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you, Laura. I would love to be able to talk to you about getting some of your uh, writings uh, to share with the family, either at the Shivambu hut or in the next upcoming newsletter that we produce called the urine, the spotlight. So reach out to me when you get a chance. Uh, Jess, you're up, you're up girl. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, yeah, my name is Jess. I am from Missouri, located near St. Louis. Uh, my urine therapy story started about 50 days ago. Although I think it started much uh, earlier than that whenever I took out grains and sugar and everything except for raw fruits and vegetables out of my diet six months ago. And I have been a vegan for that tried all kinds of stuff. I suffered from chronic illness for the last four years. I was uh, previously a wildland firefighter and ended up bedridden for a very long time because I couldn't function. I was recovering from a vaccine injury when I was 17. I had, you know, viral meningitis, encephalitis, kidney failure, liver failure, etc. Just really wasn't giving myself uh, too much of a head start, I feel like. <laughs> so my body went into a deep rest and I revitalized so many parts of myself. And in doing that, I came into understanding structured water. And then whenever I was, you know, fast forward to not, you know, current time right now, about 50 days ago or 52 days ago, I was in the sauna, an inbred sauna. And I it said basically, hey, there's something super happening. up, Jess. You know, and then I just, yeah, I was like, oh, wow, cool. Uh, but then I heard a podcast the next day and somebody was like, drink your pee. And I was like, oh my God, I was thinking that already. So I started drinking my pee. I immediately started with enemas. Uh, well, I, I aged them actually. I think for the first three times I did it, it was like a weekend enemas. It cleared my colon out pretty well, parasites and everything. And then, yeah, so fast forward and I, have people you need know, to help them with their urine therapy journey and with juicing. And I'm also a birth doula. So I feel like uh, just in general, UT is expansive in the way of consciousness. And it's helped me in that aspect. So, yeah. 
little bit about me. Thank you, Jess. <clears throat> We're going to keep our timing going here. Kelly, are you with us? Kelly Williams? I'm taking a break from stuffing my face. Sorry. That's okay. Can you, can um, you hear me? Yeah, just take a couple, two or three minutes and tell everybody where you're located and what your journey is going like. Oh, I did uh, just a few minutes ago. I'm okay, Mississippi. Well, let's move or on. Do you want me to get into more detail? No, let's move on to the next person. We'll give everybody okay. a chance and then we'll okay. uh, start asking some questions. Uh, Labar, are you, uh, are you on camera today? Well, he turned, he just took, opened his microphone. Uh, Safina, anybody here? Oh. <laughs> All right, Marilyn. Hi, hi everyone. Um, my name, of course, you know, I'm Marilyn. I've been um, I've been doing human therapy off and on for about um, five years or so. I uh, doctor um, Doc Mike Whitort. Uh, is pretty much uh, my mentor. He's the one who introduced me to uh, Eurotherapy. And um, I use it for everything. I use it, I'm retired military, Terry. I'm trying to be a one-off, I mean, a chiropractor taking state boards. So uh, it kind of helps me with my stress. It helps me with my anxiety. I do everything from uh, inhaling it. Um, I do the the enemas, I just recently started doing the enemas. And I also, just by talking with um, Brother Sage here, I had an opportunity to talk to him one-on-one. -on -one, and I also started uh, doing the uh, the foot soap. And the foot soap helped me so, so, so much. So um, um, that's my story. That's my journey, journey with uh, Eurotherapy. Thank you, Marilyn. Glad to have you in the family. <laughs> so she, she mentioned the foot soak. And as some of you know, I've been a master foot massage therapist and reflexologist for 40 something years. So I'm all about the feet. My dad was a podiatrist and his dad was a shoemaker. So I'm a third generation foot guy. So as a reflexologist, you know that the widest por uh, surfaces of the feet are in the feet, uh, excuse me, the widest surfaces of the skin surface is in the feet. Not only this is because um, this is not only because this is where people put essential oils on the feet because of that fact, but the reflexologists know that if you stimulate these points, you're going to help the functioning of all the systems and the organs of the body. So when you're doing foot soaks, you're driving all these nutrients into your bloodstream through the feet. And a lot of people have felt calmer, have felt uh, healthier, have felt uh, clearer uh, by doing foot soaks. So if you can't necessarily do a full body massage, but you got 30 minutes, uh, get a Tupperware tub. You guys know what that is? Soft rubber, soft plastic, and put in a minimum of a half a gallon. Somebody called me this morning. Well, I don't, I don't think I have that much. Well, you want enough to cover your ankles. <clears throat> if you got a gallon, it'll go higher up the ankle. And uh, while you're sitting in the tub, make sure you got either loose pants, uh, shorts, swimsuit, or you're naked. Because while you're sitting in there for 30 minutes, you're going to massage up your calves, your thighs, your knees. Uh, you can even leave your hands in there for five or 10 minutes and do all the points in the hands. So uh, if you haven't already uh, discovered foot soaks, by golly, you owe it to yourself. Darlene? I love how soft in between my toes feel after a good foot soak, you know, in the year. And like in between the toes just feels so amazing after. And I'm a big proponent like Matt is of, of barefoot shoes, but like in between, like the toes just feel so amazingly soft. <laughs> That should lead right into a pedicure by the time you're done there. All right, I've got some questions for you guys. So I know why you're here. You came because you felt this was a valuable time to spend and a valuable message to share with each other and with the planet. Because where these go, once we publish them and send them out on social media, who knows? The last one we had was in the first 48 hours, we had 600 to 800 views. So uh, this is definitely making some uh, impact on humanity. So here's a question. Whoever wants to take it, I'm not going to address it to anybody. This is going to be just like an open area here. So whoever wants to take it, just raise your hand and go for it. Explain the term. Shivambu or Oran is an intuitive medicine. And are you teaching this to your students? Explain why this is an intuitive medicine. 
And are you teaching this to people who are you working with? Anybody want to take that? Sure, sure. If not, I will. Go ahead. <laughs> A Shibambu practice is going to be in relation to everything else in your life. So incorporating it into your life is a very intuitive process that requires uh, broad thinking, broad feeling, which is the space of intuition. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead, Darlene, because I'm about to jump on it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's intuitive is whatever's ailing you, you can intuitively use it and how you feel is necessary for the length of time you feel necessary. <laughs> For, you know, so that you can get that area where you're having issues healed. So like uh, the other woman there was putting on her hands to heal the psoriasis. Absolutely. When you have psoriasis on your hands, you're going to heal that. You know, you put it in your eyes if you're having eye issues. Put it, you know, in your ears if you're having ear issues. Where, wherever it calls you, um, you're going to be healed. Thank you. Now, I come from the perspective of being <clears throat> the, the teacher's teacher. And it's amazing to be in a position. I remember when I was 40 and my dad came up to me and says, I need your advice. And I wasn't ready to be the dad. Well, I got, I got moved up to being the teacher teacher or the guru's guru or whatever you want to label it. So I look at in the intuition process is when someone's going to come up to you, I want you to get this, guys. They're going to come up to you and say, should I just drink the midstream? Should I drink the beginning? Should I drink the end? How much should I drink? Should I drink it all day? Is it good if I'm doing drugs and prescription drugs? What about if I'm eating meat and dairy? You're going to get all these questions. And surely you can answer these questions. But our job is to facilitate their uh, own power, their own ability to heal themselves. So you want to remind them. Well, I'm going to tell you what I suggest, but it's intuitive. Because if you get a feeling you're supposed to drink all of it all day, fast one day, do an enema one day, that's what you'll do. That's what I mean by intuitive medicine. Any comments on that? Um, I have a question or um, curious to know what you think about my, uh, my thought or opinion. Um, it's something safe that you can try on everything, has no side effects. Um, you can try urine therapy. Um, it takes care of you. I think our inter intuition is that it is safe and it detoxes and regenerates. Okay, is this a form of a question or are you just sharing? Um, just sharing. I don't know um, if I'm right or wrong. I think it's something that, uh, that you can trust and uh, your intuition says it's safe. Yes, and that's going to lead right into this next question, which I was about to make a comment, but I'd rather hear from you guys. All right, can you explain why urine therapy doesn't work for everyone, quote unquote, and how it can be used to heal any illness? Anybody want to go after that one? Darlene with her shy little hand. Go ahead. Well, if somebody else wants to talk, I don't want to, I want to hear what other people have to say, but if people want to hear what I have to say, then I've got, I'm all over it. <laughs> uh, can, can you reread that question? What was that? Sorry. Yeah. Go people say, is it good for this? And it's good for oh, that. Yeah. Okay. So well. when, okay. when people do have issues tends to be, if they've got a lot to detox, if they've got some huge health issues and there's, there's a bigger, you know, health problem, then doing a lot can put you into a health crisis and it can come out too fast. So it is healing you, but it can come out too fast. So use your intuition on how much to use. Don't overdo it. If you've got some major healing to do, take it, you know, one step at a time. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that, that's the detox um, part of this big picture. But in order to someone to really truly get health, and our naturopaths from Canada and wellness people from Colorado seem to know this stuff, you have to improve every area of your life and bring it into balance. Your mental, your emotional, your physical, and your spiritual. If you don't change your diet, it's going to take a lot longer. You're still going to have illness one day and health the other day. If you're just drinking it, but you're not doing any topical protocols. If you're not exercising, you get the picture, guys. When people come up to you and, and want it to be the magic bullet, the magic pill, but they're not doing anything else to improve their life, they're not that serious. So you got to have that conversation with them. Go ahead. Uh, cool. So uh, one thing that I like about it, and I 
I thought about when I first started was like the self love about it, like loving yourself so much to where you, you trust it and then go for it, you know? That, and then maybe that's why it doesn't work for everybody. It's because they don't really, they're not uh, addressing that they, they need to love themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. love, and trust your own body and that these amazing vessels we live in to uh, take care of themselves. They, they're just not trusting themselves, I guess. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to mute myself. It makes sense. And there's also the mental counterpart. If people, if people are still getting off on getting attention, playing the victim, and they're not willing to uh, start improving their self-worth and their self-esteem self and working at all that guilt and all the shame, everything they grew up with, either by their family or religion, whatever, uh, that's going against them. So you, your whole mind, body, emotional spirit has to unite as a team, team effort. And you can see what's going on in your life. You can see the people in this water community who came back to life because they wanted to. And that's a very powerful thing to, to hook into people. If you can get their why and their motivation, oh, yeah, they're going to heal. They're going to change everything in their life. Anybody want to add to this conversation before we go to the next question? Um, this is Kelly. I, sorry, I raised my hand, but I don't know if you can see it. I'll lower it. No, go ahead, Kelly. Um, okay, so I was just going to add to that. I think the only reason I can really think that urine therapy really truly wouldn't work for someone other than the detox is also their inhibition and being taught that it's disgusting. Um, like my husband sees me doing it and he's okay with me doing it, but he's like, I'm just not there yet mentally, like, because we've been taught. So it's been so like pounded into us that it's not what we should be doing. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else? All right, let's go to the next question. So I wanted to get that across because people say, well, if I just drink it, then I'm going to be fine. Or when people maybe don't believe in the in urine therapy and it, it's it's going to heal them, then it doesn't it doesn't work the same as if you have faith in it. Right, exactly. And then there's the people who are still dealing with the disgust factor. Mm -hmm. They haven't got over their mind. Well, when we teach newbies um, how to get started, and I'd like to hear some of your other approaches, guys. When I teach a newbie and they're trying to make that new link or that neural link or the new uh, connection to the water in a new understanding, first thing you want to do is tell them to take some pee, dip your finger in it, and notice you didn't get sick or die. All right. All you did was touch it. It was an innocent thing. And you, you know, see, Cole's been there. The second thing you want to do is have them lick their finger. All right. We'll kind of create a whole new association and a, and a shift in their perception. Then you go from that to get a dropper bottle and get a dropper full and put that under the tongue. Hold that for a while and swallow it. And it'll, little by little, they'll step toward an ounce, three ounces, six ounces and so forth. And when they get to where they can take it from there, cut them loose. Does anybody else have any newbie advice? I have a question um, in terms of like people who try it initially, like maybe they get a little bit of diarrhea um, and then that can be, what's that about? Darlene, go ahead. Oh yeah, total, total detox. There, there's something that, you know, it's just flushing you out because it just does, it, it goes to work right away. And, and, you know, you're, you're eating something or you have some intestinal uh, spots to heal, you know, it's just a flush out. Yeah. Sometimes it's diarrhea. Sometimes it's nausea. Sometimes it's migraines. Yeah. <clears throat> Your body's either in one or two cycles during the day. Anyway, it's either healing, it's either cleansing, purifying, or it's restoring and building. And it's, it's going on all the time. And our job is to stay centered in the while this is going on and not to panic. You know, when people don't know about something, they tend to do that. Darlene? Yeah, there's some questions, Brother Sage, in the in the chat. Did you see that from? Uh... Let's take a look. Oh, hair regrowth. And the other one was about a diet. And what are your views on diet during urine therapy? And can we drink milk during urine therapy? Well, <clears throat> um, let me go back to it's an intuitive medicine. 
I'm not at a point now where I tell people what to eat because they're not going to want to be a fruitarian necessarily or, or live off raw foods. But I'll find out where they are and how interested are they in getting better health and making changes. Now, I'm not really for milk or dairy because of what happens with the milk and how they homogenize it and do all this stuff with it and they blow out the molecules and really not the same value that it was when it first came out of the cow. So you have to kind of do your homework if you want to look at the food issue. What was the other question? Uh, it was about hair. But with the, with the, all I'll just add to your milk before we go on to the hair is, um, you know, uh, the urine is naturally mucus getting gets rid of mucus. So if you're having a lot of dairy products, um, you're going to find a lot of mucus is coming out and you're going to be really phlegmy at first when you first start with the UT because it's going to be pulling that dairy out of the deeper tissues. Yeah. And then with the hair, you, do you want to take that brother Sage? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, right. I'm finally letting my hair grow out for the first time in years. Um, <laughs> um, for those who've been asking why I still have this little bald spot at the top, um, and I've been doing a lot of hair massage with urine therapy, and my hair seems to get darker every time I do it. But I came from a genetic disposition. My, my sister had balding crown on the top, my brother, my dad, and I've shaved my head over 12 times. It's not an issue for me. Um, if guys want to grow their hair back and they're fully intended on doing it, I can see they can do it. Some people are talking about growing teeth back. But it doesn't seem to be an issue for me. Did I answer the question? Yeah. So what, how I see hair is hair is usually a hormonal imbalance. And so urine has a lot of hormonal hormones in them to help replace um, if things are not balanced properly. Um, you know, a lot of hair issues tend to be hormonal. Um, and then toxin build up in the body. So if you've got too many toxins in the body, you've got a hormonal imbalance, you know, your, your hair is going to thin and bald. Okay. Matt, did you want to add to that? Yeah, no, but I got a cool idea. And her mercury uh, adds to gray hair. Um, so I'd be interested to see, because I feel like, you know, maybe some of that more overt, really bad poisoning is something that we can actually get rid of fairly quickly with a strong protocol. I wonder if we can reverse graying. Um, I don't know. I have a strong feeling we can because um, some of the herb teachers over the years said it was a mineral deficiency. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say, Brother Sage. It's, I see it as a mineral deficiency. And so if it's helping you put minerals back in your body, helping you eat foods, directing you to the foods that are best for your body that to replace the minerals, you know, or, you know, then that cycle will help, you know, get that balance back in the body. Um, a lot of pops and fast foods, you know, they, they mess up the phosphorus calcium balance in the body. Um, you know, they, they leach minerals from the bones. Um, so we've got to get that back into the body. Thank you. Oh, cell salts, personalized cell salts based off your zodiac sign. Maybe there's something there in UT. I, I just bet because it's such personalized medicine. It is. And are you going to look into that? <sighs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> God, that's a complicated question. <laughs> well, you, you put it out there. Anything, anything goes here. All right, take a deep breath. Let's go for another question. Explain the statement, Oren. You guys familiar with the word Oren? Do you, know, do you know who Oren was in uh, Marvel Comics? If no. you go to Wikipedia, go to Wikipedia sometime, type in Aquaman. It'll tell you Aquaman's real name was Oren. <laughs> he, he was the god of, of water. Just a little bit of Oren uh, trivia for you guys. So here's a question. Can you explain the statement, Oren alchemizes anything it touches? Any takers? Okay, I'll start off. Why not? People ask the question, well, if I'm gargling it in my mouth because I have gingivitis or gum disease or something with my tongue or teeth, whatever it is, shouldn't I spit it out because, you know, it's taking out the bacteria? Well, you have to think for a while on that one because Orin is the best antiviral, antifungal, antiseptic, uh, water on the planet. So as a form of alchemizing agent, what it does is it neutralizes the, the uh, bacteria or toxin in the mouth, and then it merges our joints with the same frequency of the orin. In essence, it is orin. Drink it. 
Right. And I just add to that, that light cures, like it's homeopathic in a way. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you've got some ailment, you know, by swallowing it, you're going to get a little bit of that ailment, which is going to help cure you. Thank you. And some people are telling me that instead of filling up the bath for those people who want to do a urine bath, Matt would know, those that want to do a urine bath oftentimes say, well, don't you need like eight to 10 gallons of urine stored up in order to take a bath? Well, yeah, if you can do it, but most people won't. So if you would just put in whatever you can into the bath and make it homeopathic version of a urine bath, uh, you're going to be able to neutralize the chemicals that are in the city water. And since nobody here but me pees in the bathtub, <clears throat> uh, then <laughs> you may know what that feels like. All right, any more comments about alchemizing? It, it seems was to be information transfer. Um, yeah, the, just the phrase information transfer and liquid crystal. Um, and then we're the, we're the same kind of structured water as a body. So the relationship between the Orin and our body is part of the magic, um, the communication mm -hmm. there. Um, and, uh, just a couple of thoughts about alchemy. Well, it was the alchemists like St. Germain and some other old timers who were doing the process of transmuting base metals into gold. And what this really is a demonstration of transmuting or elevating our consciousness. And a lot of people consider us as the Goldens who are ushering the Golden Age. So um, glad you guys are in the Golden uh, Pool with me. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something more concrete. That's probably one of the more challenging aspects about it for me is just uh, the feelings, the massive amount of influx of more information and feelings into my system. Uh, when I do UT, the breath work is just necessary. <laughs> I'm getting way more into that. Um, I guess from a closed off male ego perspective, it's quite, di it's quite difficult. <laughs> well, you're holding up pretty good there, brother. Uh, thank you. Now, um, let's see a show of hands of anybody who's done urine fast. What you'll discover at some point during the day, and I like to hear your experience because I know what happens to me. When I do a urine fast at some point in the day, uh, it dawns on me that I didn't eat and uh, the cravings never show up. Cravings for certain foods, craving for certain substances, craving for sex. I mean, all those things aren't even happening while I'm fasting and I'm too busy either working on projects or serving people. So what comes up for you guys when you're doing the fast or what doesn't come up? Yeah, please. I don't uh, want to talk by myself. I uh, uh, Ollie is a lot better at fasting than I am. But uh, one thing I notice when I start becoming such a baby and oh, I'm so hungry, but uh, I tried uh, aged. Whew, that took away every craving. <laughs> a big cup of aged. So I didn't have a craving the rest of the day and it felt great, by the way. So. Uh, do you mind if I, real quick, has anybody ever tried to uh, make colloidal silver with the uh, orange? Because I'm going to try it. But <laughs> Please do and make a video. Okay. 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 We will. Thanks. <laughs> I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nick Caputo has just joined our call. And Nick, can you uh, get on the, my, on the camera? I have a question for you. Hey, man, how's it going? Nick, welcome to the call. Um, hey. I'm going to ask you the question, and, and at some point, give us a little um, intro to yourself and your journey with urine therapy. But the question we're having right now is, those people are doing urine fasting, what have they noticed uh, during the fast? Like, I'm not having any cravings about food, or I'm not having uh, certain behavior patterns. What have you noticed when you do urine fasting uh, that you'd want to share with people? So I feel like it definitely depends on the person. Some people do experience like complete lack of cravings and complete like ease throughout the process and other people detox really hard. So I would say um, it's kind of like a, like a 50, 50 between the two. Um, at least from what I've heard from my clients and from people who have um, interacted with me about their experience with it. I really think it, it depends on where you're at when you start. So that's why I usually recommend that people do something like a, like a liquid fast for at least a couple of days or like a fruit fast before they jump into a urine fast just so the detox isn't so rough. But um, 
yeah, usually like if you do prepare a little bit with a liquid fast, like it's the urine fast is the most powerful fast there is. And I, I would recommend even doing it over a dry fast because, you know, we need to compensate for dehydration and restore balance before we try to maintain it. Thank you. So guys, uh, this is Nick and Nick, uh, uh, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and a little bit of something about your urine therapy journey. Cool. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Caputo. I am originally from New Jersey. I am on Oahu and Hawaii right now. Uh, I kind of lived a little bit everywhere in the last couple of years, the Dominican Republic, Maui, now I'm on Oahu. Um, so my urine therapy journey started uh, about two years ago, uh, January 2020. I'm a disease reversal specialist, so I work with uh, extended fasting, diaphragmatic breath work, reflexology, semen retention, a lot of different things, sun gazing, to help people reverse pretty much all forms of disease from like headaches to acne to cancer and heart disease and diabetes and Lyme's disease. So I came across um, urine therapy about two years ago, and I started just, you know, I had an issue. I was actually um, on acid. It was the last time I was taking psychedelics. I was very keen on the idea that I was going to um, experience the psychedelic nature of life without psychedelic drugs in the future. And this was like my, kind of my goodbye to psychedelics. And I had an interesting experience where my hands like locked up and I couldn't let go of my hands. And they were just like clenching and clenching and clenching and clenching. And I couldn't let go of them. And this went on for several hours. And I called uh, one of my friends, his name is Devon. And on Instagram, his name is uh, the Black Airbender. He's another breathwork coach, disease reversal coach. And uh, I asked him what he, what he thought I should do. And he told me to drink my pee. And I would laugh at first and I was like, you're kidding, right? And he was like, no, seriously, like do it. And I was just like, all right, I've never heard this, but I'll try anything at this point. Like, all right, let's do it. So I did it. And as soon as I drank it, like literally one, it touched my tongue and my hands released after like four hours of trying to like massage my hands and have like my partner massage my hands and keep everything open. And like nothing worked until that. And it worked right away. And I was like, how did you, how did you know that was going to work? And he was like, it always works. And he was like chuckling. Like it was like nothing. And I was like, okay. I was like, you're on to something here, but like, what is, I, I want to go deeper into this. So then I decided to just keep going deeper into it. And I started just you know, doing it pretty much every day and using it for enemas and using it on my skin and like just everything. I just started to do more research and just learn more um, and do it all. And then it wasn't until a couple months later, maybe like May or June, that I started posting about it. And then when I posted about it, I saw like a million other people start posting about it. Like everyone who was doing it in the closet just started like talking about doing it once I started talking about doing it. And then it just <laughs> kind of, it like blew up my Instagram page. And yeah, pretty much like it's one of the main things that I advocate for because it's honestly one of the easiest things to start. It's a lot easier to start drinking your pee, in my opinion, than it is to, to do a 30 day fast. And for some people, the urine therapy will do the trick. Whereas like, you know, some, some people don't need the whole 30 day fast, just the urine therapy alone will help for some things. So for some people it won't, but for most people it will. Unless it's like something like serious cancer or like, you know, something like that, you would obviously want to make changes to your diet. And either way, like the urine therapy and the breath work are two things that I really think uh, keep you accountable in the rest of the journey where like the, you, you do those two things first and then it helps everything else fall in line. Because if you commit to a daily breath work practice and you commit, <laughs> I love that, and you commit to a daily urine therapy practice, like when you eat something shitty, one, you're not going to be able to breathe properly in the morning. You're going to feel the blocking of your diaphragm. You're not going to be able to like suck in all the way. You're not going to be able to get that full diaphragmatic range of motion with every breath. And you're going to feel that. And it's going to almost hurt when you try to suck in. So you're going to be like, all right, I'm not going to eat this again tomorrow because it compromised my practice. And same thing with urine therapy. If you commit to that, then the next morning when you eat something shitty, you're going to wake up and your pee is going to taste terrible. And you're going to be like, all right, well, it was definitely that. So I'm not going to do that anymore. And then you kind of find your balance of what you eat that doesn't compromise your breathing and doesn't make your pee taste terrible. All right. Who's ever got a phone? Let's mute it. Thank you. <laughs> that was me. My bad. <laughs> So, um, guys, how's everybody feeling right now? Good. Um, I would like you to share your, uh, your lifestyle. What would you say are your most outstanding 
urine therapy protocols that you use every day that's been making uh, uh, its effect, has been helping you the most that you could share with our viewers right now? Sure. Um, I would definitely say just looping in general, like pretty much everything that comes out goes back in. Um, that's like what I do more than anything else is just I bring a jar with me just about everywhere I go. Um, if I don't have a jar with me, I'm literally water fountaining into my mouth. <laughs> yeah, or using my hands or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, lay on the back and just like stream it up, whatever you got to do sometimes. Um, uh, there's yes, a, there's I, a master right there. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm also an avid nudist. So I do spend a lot of time naked outside. So um, sometimes like if I don't have a jar, like I'll just like literally just pee all over myself and rub it into my skin um, rather than like using a spray bottle or like dumping it on my skin like afterwards. But I, I think the spray bottle is the most efficient way to use it. Um, and I do like the spray bottle a lot. Uh, that being said, though, sometimes it's it's more fun just to like be playful with it and just pee on yourself. Um, it's just more fun. It's like being a kid. But um, yeah, other than looping and, and using it on my skin, I use it as eye drops in my eyes. Um, I don't really have eye problems, but I've been uh, working towards uh, enhancing my underwater vision. So like I do a lot of free diving and I'm working towards not having to use goggles. So for the last like six to eight months, I've been uh, doing a lot of diving without goggles and working on restoring my vision to get it clearer in the water. So the urine eye drops have definitely helped with that. The ocean water itself in my eyes has definitely helped as well. But I think the, the urine eye drops has definitely helped. And I use aged for my um, or mature for my eyes. Um, I'll also use it in my ears. Um, the only thing I won't do with the ears is I won't use it before I, go, I get on a plane, only after. Because when you get on a plane, it actually helps for your ears to be a little clogged for the pressure so that you don't get the, the popping. So I've noticed if I clean my ears right before I go on a plane, it's like super intense. And if I wait until after I get off the plane, then it's a lot better. Um, so just for those of you who travel a lot, something to note. Um, I use it in my mouth, my teeth. I uh, swish it in my mouth like mouthwash every day. Um, and some days more than others, like some days I don't really do it too much. I don't really feel like I need it every day. Uh, I don't brush my teeth. I haven't brushed my teeth in like three years. Um, by any chance, eat. Nick, by any chance, and I've, I've kidded about being a spy and a secret agent. Uh, when you go on the airplane and in the middle of the flight, you go back to the bathroom, collect some and give yourself a little shower uh, inside the airplane. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty much getting up like every time that I, I urine fast every time that I fly. So like whether I'm going from Jersey to Hawaii, like a 10 hour flight or whether I'm going to. Oahu from Maui. That's like a 40 minute flight. I'm looping at least once or twice on that 40 minute flight. You know, I, I overhydrate beforehand and then I just bring a jar and I just loop because they don't sell anything edible or drinkable at airports. So that's pretty much like how I keep my myself entertained. I always get an aisle seat instead of a window seat. So I'm always able to get up and go to the bathroom and do my thing. But yeah, it's nice and refreshing to just be able to like rinse your face or do whatever, like while you're in there. All get the one of these. Nick, you got to get one of yeah. these. Of course, mine has urine therapy does a body good. But these are our little secret water uh, inflatable bottles that you can That's you know, epic. take with That's you so epic. <laughs> in your shirt pocket or your pants pocket, and then you're covered the whole trip. That's epic. Keeps it low key. I just be walking with a full jar. I just know that the jar go is empty when I walk in and the jar is empty when I walk out. So I, some people have to be thinking like, what's he doing with that jar in there? <laughs> yeah. well, well, the neat thing, and, and Matt could tell you, if you're walking around town or a shopping center or anywhere, <laughs> nobody knows what's in that jar except you. And you just can't yeah. help but smile every time you take a drink out in public because they got no clue what you're up to. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you a good, a good way to knock out six or seven protocols really fast is while the bath is filling up or while you're taking a shower, uh, either bring some of your Shivambo into the, into the bath area with you or collect some while the bath is filling up. And so while that's happening, the bath is filling up, boom, I'm going to drop some in my eyes, snort it up my nose, stick it in my ears, rub it in the hair, do it all over the body, the belly button. That's and another one I knows. I forgot to mention that one. That was one of the first things I learned. That was the first thing I started doing after looping. Um, I started snorting it. And that was such a game changer like the shit that came out of my face was unbelievable it changed the way i looked 
my face got less like puffy and swollen. Like my face, like my jaw started to look ripped. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. And for the guys who aren't doing nasal drinking, nasal snorting or nasal sniffing, uh, you got to try it out to find out what it's like to have your third eye pop open, to have your sinuses hydrating, to have all the brain come online again. And the folks, and I learned it from Samuel Cohen out there in uh, India, who goes back and forth from Israel, India, et cetera. Uh, these guys, they got it down to an art. They can drink it in one nostril, close the other nostril, and f bring it up and back the throat, uh, barely spilling anything. Yeah. When, when I was a child, I had surgery on my nose. They burnt all the veins and I've been using urine to heal it all. Um, at first I had to dilute it because it burnt too much because um, the veins were quite, the scar tissue was quite sensitive, mm -hmm. but over time I've been able to do more and stronger and, and heal it. So it's amazing what, what it can do. Yeah. And anybody's dealing with respiratory issues, asthma issues, uh, anything dealing with lungs, uh, get it in your nose. It's, you know, you want to clear up not only the head area, but it's the chest and the lungs as well. Uh, Cole, you have a question, comment? Yeah. Uh, so that's another thing I learned from Master Earth. And the way I do it, I started in the shower so I could spill it, you know, but you just keep it like that. And mm -hmm. you're not trying to drink or snort. You just kind of go, go, yeah. <laughs> and it'll start to go down and you just hold it there. Eventually you get it. Like my buddy, he, he doesn't even get his mustache wet anymore. <laughs> I'm not that great at it, but uh, I do that every time I go to the shower. And is there somewhere up, you're yeah. working with the throat muscle in order to like open it up and collapse it or just give it a gulp whenever yeah, you, you know how you make, you know how you could go up. Like if you're chugging like that, you go, uh, 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 I don't know how to, explain it but that but like you're kind of moving that uh part of your throat jeez i so don't sound very scientific but okay. you just hold it to where it's in your nose ready and then you start messing start doing stuff with your throat and you'll notice it'll start you'll start taking drinks and you'll don't 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 and then the uh, more you do it the better you get yeah that's kind of how i do it it's like you take like a big snort and you just like, so it's like you kind of like you inhale it hard and it'll drip down to your mouth, like kind of like, like you're like you're bringing mucus down and then it'll just swallow, but it's just not mucus. Obviously. I, I, guys, I, I don't really. If you have a stuffy nose, it's a great way to knock out a bunch of mucus really quick because once it Definitely. gets up there, it's going to break everything loose and you just force it out on either side and you'll. It's a great way to clean out your nostrils. Yeah, I would definitely recommend doing it like that and not really trying to drink it because you can't drink it when you're blocked. So you kind of have to snort it to get clean. Then once you're clean, then you can drink it. So this could end up being like a 30, 45 minute process of getting empty. Like you might have to literally snort it like 10 times in a row and get everything out. And then you'll be able to breathe like you've never been able to breathe in your life. It, it hydrates all your sinuses, all that empty space up there, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, all you get more electricity from the air, every breath. These, this cavity, this, all these sinuses, air goes in here when you breathe, and that air is connected through the olfactory nerves and the olfactory bulbs directly to your brain. So the air itself isn't getting up to your brain, but the electricity from the air is being transmitted to the brain via these olfactory nerves. So getting air around the sinuses and getting rid of that wall of snot that's stuck in here is allowing your brain to be nourished on a level on a level that it has never really been nourished since you took your first bite of something with salt in it, et cetera. I expect there's going to be a new wave of nose drinkers after this call. <laughs> um, if anybody just joined us who hasn't introduced themselves and would like to do so, um, open up your uh, camera. Like Virga, are you there? Not a problem. Not a problem. Um, what's anybody's experience of doing uh, the protocol with the ears? With the rinsing of the ears? Have you noticed anything? Darlene? What I have noticed is 
uh, even without rinsing the ears with it, with just doing the nose protocol or not even doing the nose protocol, if you're doing it rectally or drinking in other ways, um, all of a sudden there's this letdown of a lot of wax in the ears. So people that I've got started with the urine therapy, even if they're not doing it nasally yet, I've had to candle their ears and huge amounts of wax has come out. Um, like I've never seen it come out of people's ears before. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's all coming down. It's letting go. It's... <laughs> It's, it's cutting loose. Beautiful. Yeah, it's decalcifying the penile gland and everything is, you know, so it can not only come out the nose, but it can come out the ears. So make sure that you're keeping your ears clean because it can it can start to build there if you're if you're not, um, you know, rinsing it out properly. Thank you. Um, how many of you are fan? How many of you are fans? Let's get this new guy, Oscar. I'm a big proponent of doing uh, or an enemas. Uh, I once spent two years nonstop doing enemas, and I was surprised being a raw foodist for so many years how much crap was coming out of me. I don't know where it was hiding. I didn't realize my intestines were that long. Um, so I highly recommend you build that into your lifestyle, whether you do it once a month or once a week or however you do that, because you're going to help clean out the lower part of your bowel and get as much of that stuff out of your gut as possible. Is anybody else uh, experimenting with uh, enemas? I've been doing uh, enemas all the time since like about two years ago. It was one of the first things that I tried with it. Um, I was already doing enemas with distilled water and like diatomaceous earth at the time. Mm -hmm. But the urine just works so much better. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a game changer. And I, I still do them pretty consistently, like pretty much whenever I get the chance to do them. Um, and I pretty much only eat fruit and I still do them. And I still see some crazy shit come out of me sometimes. Like no matter what you're eating, you still accumulate stuff if you're eating every day. And sometimes right. I do find myself in patterns of eating every day still, which isn't often, but it is somewhat common for me still. <laughs> and the enemas, uh, usually I do them in a transition time. So like if I am eating every day, like I'll do start doing enemas every day. And then eventually like, you know, that's like the transition into fasting. And then once I'm empty, like I, there's no real point to do them when I'm empty. Sometimes I'll do like a half one, like half the bag with aged or something and just try to hold it in and like absorb it that way kind of like drinking it through the other end mm -hmm. and just try to hold the whole thing in and just not, not let it go at all, which is tough. But sometimes, sometimes I can do it. Well, when I'm Nick, super, super clean, I can do it. Nick, I don't know if you caught Professor Spira in his mucusless diet community, but some of the young goddesses like to show off how they can do an, an enema. They're using their own water and stuff with a headstand and hold it while oh, they're yeah. in their head before they I turn know. over and evacuate. I could do that too, definitely. Is this like an advanced form. course? No, nah, honestly, like if you could do a headstand, you could do a headstand with an enema. It honestly makes it a little easier to hold because everything is going up. It like gets it really up into the, like the, you know, the other areas of the colon that you usually don't get up into. I've also, I also do sometimes like double enemas. So like I'll do like the whole half gallon bag or whatever, and then immediately like just refill it and do another one and do like a double and get like up there, up there. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some of my clients do four, so two whole gallons. Um, and the stuff that comes out of them sometimes is crazy. My dad did a double once. Um, my dad did a 90, uh, 60 day green juice fast to reverse his type two diabetes. Um, and we talk about it on my podcast. He started doing enemas on during that. And he was like obsessed with the enemas. Like there was like black shit coming out of them, like disgusting ass shit. And he was like, yo, I'm going to do an enema every single day. I don't care. He was like, the pee, it works. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to do it. He was scared to drink it at first. He, he only drank it a couple of times. He actually drank my aged the first time he ever drank pee. It was, it was my aged. Mm -hmm. And uh, cause he thought that mine would be cleaner than his. So he wanted to drink mine instead. Um, and then he drank his one time we were at this sauna place and it was like super clear. And he was just like, you know, he needed a jar. I was like, you're just going to waste it. Like you need a jar. And I was just like, I gave him the jar with no lid. And he's like, how am I going to save this for the enema later? I don't have a lid. And I'm like, you don't need a lid. And he's like, nah, bro, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, just go do it. Just go do it. And he went in the bathroom and he did it. And he came out like cheesy. And he's like, I did it. I did it. It wasn't even bad. It didn't even taste bad. So funny. And then, uh, yeah, he still does it like inconsistently now. But um, it definitely helped him a lot towards the end of that fast. And it made it a lot easier for him to continue.
Thank you. Uh, so what you mentioned on is one of the uh, one of the major bullet points that I put together in a chart, and that is that um, our Orin or Orin itself will work. It's that powerful of a universal uh, medicine. It'll work regardless of our considerations of it. It will work whether you drink a man's, a woman's, a child, an adult, a different race, a different state of health. It will work. Uh, a different some animal, a different state. Different... A tree. I mean, fruit is basically tree urine. <laughs> Water is tree pee. There you go. So we've had we've had people on some of these calls, like uh, Dr. Bunmi Samola. He's an herb teacher out in Nigeria. When he was ten years old, he was deathly ill. His mom was wise enough to share her urine with him. He recovered, and now years later, he's a teacher of urine therapy. We happen to have Jess's story. Jess, would you tell us about sharing your urine with your mom while I go pee, and you guys talk over right back? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been only doing urine therapy, I kind of mentioned earlier, for 50 days now. But before that, I was purifying my diet basically to set myself up for urine therapy. I didn't know I was doing that. But yeah, uh, more recently, my mom has known about UT. Actually, Nick, my mom shared with me after I started U UT intuitively an interview uh, with you in it. And I was like, oh, sick. Like, that's kind of cool. He's saying some oh. cool stuff. Um so she had been in the know-how of your work for quite some time and I lived under a rock. I didn't even have social media or anything. And um, so more recently she had saw that I was chugging my pee all day long for 50 days. And she was like, she came over and I had a friend over from Denver and he drank my pee. <laughs> and then my mom was like, all right, I'm doing it. So she chugged my pee and asked if she could take home seconds. <laughs> Is that the video, the video you shared with the time-lapse photography? Yeah, so that was me and my friend from Denver. And then actually in the same weekend, uh, so my mom drank my pee, my friend from Denver drank my pee, and then two of my best friends who live out in the Shawnee National Forest drank my pee. <laughs> so it was quite interesting. Everybody was so intrigued with, uh, you know, they had heard a pop. Oh, Jess, you froze. There's a there's a guy who contacted me. You know how you guys are so freaking creative. You come up with the most amazing uses of our uh, holy water. He says, I'd like to bottle it and, and sell it around the world. I said, well, <clears throat> they do that with the uh, the cow urine, <clears throat> the Gomitra, Gomutra. And a friend of mine brought some back from India. She says, oh, you're really into urine therapy. Let me get you some of the cow urine uh, from India. And the first thing I did was I took screw off the top and I go, whoa, it smells like the barn. It smells like a floor of animals. So I drank it and it's like, I feel like I'm drinking off the floor of the barn. And I, I couldn't wrap my mind around finishing it. So I put it on my body and put the rest in my garden. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. The cow the cow urine never really lit me up like that. It's like I got my own. My own is chilling. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I never I, I guess like choice. They eat, they eat a lot cleaner than people. So if you're like still, you know, out in India eating like some nasty food, maybe. But even then, like your own is still pretty much better <laughs> for you. You do a very good job. Uh, Lena, Lena, can you unmute yourself? She just joined the car call. Uh, tell people who you are and where you're from and something about your journey. Can you hear me? Yeah, just fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, as my name is Lina Gonzalez. And I originally I come from Mexico, but uh, now I'm living in Texas, USA. And I'm in urine therapy for five years. So five years, yes. And now it's my second day in fast. So I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, the long fast is uh, the Are you elemental. staying active? Are you staying real active on your fast? Are you able to do exercise yes. and things? Yes, yes, yes. Today is, the, today is the second day. I start yesterday. Well, actually, the day before yesterday, like five in the evening until now. And the long fast that I remember in the past, it was for um, like 40, 41 days and feeling good. And after 
one year. This is the new fast. And I feel good. I feel good. You look gorgeous. Keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I have one question. She's uh, 54. <laughs> My husband. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead, <laughs> Lena. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 I don't have problems. Yeah. I'm 54. Yes. And uh, I'm grandma. Uh, so, yeah, my question is about the vision. Because if you notice, I have this. Uh, for uh, IFAR, I don't have any problem. I can see everything. But for me, like here, this screen, it's, uh, it's tricky. They're like, you know, like before, mm -hmm. I just need to put really part of me, the newspaper or whatever. And now it's just like the shape and it's two lines there. Okay, so you, you are interested in healing your eyes? Yes. Are you doing any yeah. eye rinses right now? Yes. Yes, but every time the eye I'm doing, I stop and I stop because the pain that I feel into my eyes is really amazing. <laughs> I I just I quit. Now using are you, using are you using fresh or evolving, which some call age during? Which are you using? Um I was using First, one or two drops all and mix with fresh. Then I have uh, the reaction the second day, but something good that the holes they have here, it's uh, pushing some, uh, a little like rocks and it feels good and I can see better and everything. And then, if I continue, uh, and then my pain into my eyes, it's a lot. Then I cut, then I cut, and then I use fresh. I have the same problem um, after third or fourth day. So I need, if somebody has I have this problem, it can help me. Okay. Um I would recommend that you either have a conversation with Darlene or myself so we can look at uh, what you're doing with other areas of your life that might uh, complement uh, the restoration of your eyes, including healing your liver and various other organs that are connected to vision. Darlene? Yeah, so what I can add right now is just to add on what Nick was saying about, um, you know, if you're feeling a lot of pain, there's some emotions trapped in there. And so, you know, you need to breathe it out. You need to sit with that pain. You need to see what emotions come up and you need to do some breath work with that um, to, to release it. Because I, I believe the breath work in conjunction with urine therapy is so important for releasing what's trapped in our, in our different fields. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Everyone take a deep breath. <laughs> this is a miracle. Every time you breath, every time you invite your breath back in, you give your mind a chance to, to sit back and let the energy of that element clean you out. You see, the mind has a, a tendency to not do well at cleaning itself. So when you're sitting with a fire, when you're doing conscious breath work, when you're chanting and doing kirtan, Matt knows this stuff, uh, when you're out in nature, uh, your mind can slow down enough so your body can do its job. This is why people meditate. For those of you guys who want to get started too with the breath work and you don't know where to start, um, I have a... Uh, pre-recorded like video audio course with like audio so you could like put headphones in and like listen to the music and like listen to the guidance and breathe along with that with a video tutorial for two different sessions so that's called my how to breathe level one course i'm going to give everybody in in this call 50 percent off i'm going to make a discount code and i'll give you guys the code um i'll make the code drink p <laughs> be, sure to leave, be sure I'll to leave be sure to leave that be sure yeah, to leave that link What's going to happen when this call is over is um, I'm going to uh, download it onto my laptop, 
and then I can post it up on YouTube and send it out to everybody. But uh, all this chat is recorded. So I, whatever you post on the chat, it shows up. Uh, I get a copy of it. And if anybody wants that, uh, send me your email. If anybody wants to contact me or anybody on this call, whether it's Nick or Darlene, uh, then, uh, you know, let us know. Uh, Celinda, we're going to we're going to close here in just a minute. Celinda, you want to say hi real quick and tell us uh, about your journey? Uh, hi, everyone. How are you? Can you hear me? Just fine, sweetie. Go ahead. Oh, OK. And what part of the journey you want me to tell you about? Uh, I've done you got, you got two or three minutes. Just tell us what your experience of therapy is and anything you could share with people. Um, I just found out about it about maybe a year and a half ago. And um, I was skeptical and did some research, but what I realized is that as I was doing clonic uh, hydration and stuff, the urine helped clean me out faster. Like immediately all the, I don't know, sludge out of my gut start mm -hmm. coming out when I would get the clonics. And then believe it or not, even though you see them now, um, I used to have more wrinkles than this. And so it magically cleared up the wrinkles that were on my neck, all of that. It made my skin. I had eczema. And so eczema on my legs and my skin would dry out. And I would just rub it on my skin. And as in a couple of days, it would just go. And so I thought, okay, we no more of the outer exterior that we're going to start drinking it. And when I start drinking it, of course, I have to use the bathroom even more, but it seemed like it got rid of the toxins and the, the whatever was making me slow. I'll say that. So I'm not sure what was making me slow, but whatever was making me slow. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I start rinsing it with my eyes. And so actually, I can see it was better than um, wheatgrass. So I started diluting it and putting it in my eyes mm -hmm. and my vision got better. And so now I kind of use it for everything. Um, I'm not a connoisseur quite yet, so I can't do six month old urine and drink it, but I will put it on my face and put it on my body, put it on my hair. It does hair growth. So I had some uh, not hair here and I'm all excited. So I, I won't use a ball the two minutes, but um, my hair started growing back all over. So I would just rinse it on my hair and I would just kind of pray. The lady said, put essential oils on your hair so you don't smell so bad, but it still smelled bad. I didn't really care because I'm thinking, I can't even tell you guys what's going on with my skin internally and externally and how I feel emotionally. And so I would just rather go around stinking than- uh, And stinking. Yeah, just- stinking in some essential oils or whatever, but it was just, yeah, I feel a lot better. It cleared up my skin. My skin wasn't so dry. And I lived in Arizona at the time. So you know how dry your skin could get. So it replenished my skin a lot. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to close out with a few announcements. Um, if you haven't already got a copy of these books, uh, reach out to me and I'll tell you how to get it either from Amazon or a signed copy like Nick has. And um, this new book is going to be, uh, is uh, we're bringing this book back to life. It's called The Secrets of Youthing. It was one of my influences for starting urine therapy. It was written by my mentor, Leonard Orr, in 1994. He not only talks about his personal journey with urine therapy, he gives uh, the whole Damar Tantra and explains how Babaji, who he knows mm -hmm. as Shiva, uh, told him to drink his pee, and now he tells me. So I knew Shiva had it, had me in mind. So we're working. I'm working with my virtual assistant in India. We're hoping to launch this book on January 22nd, 22nd. What is it? What's the number on that? One two 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 of 2022. Uh, if you guys have not already uh, discovered the Shivambu Hut, uh, go to shivambu.org. And uh, you'll find a link to the free membership of our water uh, family um, social media platform. We're now 410 members right now, and that's growing all the time. We have a petition going around. We've got about 48 
people have signed so far. We plan to take this petition to uh, major health leaders and governments around the world to make it more known and socially acceptable uh, to talk about urine therapy. And we got all kinds of projects going on, including the Water Family Directory. I think, Nick, did we get you listed? Um, did I list you? I think. It, you said the... The one tomorrow, right at 10.30? No, I'm talking about the Water Family Directory. It's on my website. And uh, what it's designed to do is that anybody can find a urine therapy teacher close by anywhere in the world. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, I don't think you have me on there, but that would be dope. All right. Reach out to me by either text or email, and I'll tell you what I need. I have, you can, I have a question. Okay. You can find it anywhere in the world? Yeah, well, we have people in major countries, major cities, and those that are willing to be available to the world as a teacher or a therapist are willing to be listed. Okay. So if you, I, need I, someone, I, if you need someone in UK, you need someone in America, if you need someone in Canada, if you need someone down in in Portugal, uh, we have people in all these places. I live in Belize now, so I was asking. Very nice. So last last thing I want to hear everybody to say before we leave here one or two positive messages and statements for the world uh, that could help them uh, get through this day. Anything that you feel would be a blessing and a good idea, uh, leave it in, just tell, just go ahead and speak it in one or two sentences. Anybody? May you be blessed with love and light and joy, health, freedom, connection, and, and happiness the rest of your day starting right now. Somebody else? Affirmation? You're in therapy. Your heart will thank you. <laughs> your, your heart, among other parts of your body. Yes. Yes. So let's do a group hug. I got one real quick. All right, everyone, Nate, everyone pisses excellence, but not everyone drinks it. <laughs> so drink your excellence. Really, drink. all we're saying is give piss a chance. <laughs> I love the stickers. Give it a chance. Just so you know, I've got the copyright on this. I've got the trademark. I got it from the milk industry when they let it expire in 2003. Oh. So I own the copyright and the trademark on this. And the other slogan is just drink it. Right. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to leave any kind of communications to me or to anyone on this uh, group, go to run it through the, the chat group right now before I close the call. If there's last minute communication, you want to reach out. If anybody wants a consultation with me or Nick or anybody who's been on this call, we, we can arrange that. <clears throat> now, Nick and anybody who wants to be listed in the description part of this video when we put it on YouTube, uh, send me your link, your website, your social media link, anywhere we can support you and uh, drive people your way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just put everything in the chat. I could also send it to you individually. That would be great. Cool. All right. Love you guys. Me too. Right, thank you, everybody. Have a piss test. Aloha. Aloha. Until next time. <laughs>